Welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You, sponsored by attorney Kelly Walling of Caperton Walling Law. This is the show where we learn about how to juggle our business life with peaceful parenting from moms that are doing just that. I'm your host, Kim Minch, a certified parent coach, the founder of Real Life Parent Guide, and the author of the book, Becoming Me While Raising You, A Mother's Journey to Herself. Every day, I help moms who are striving to optimize their intuition and gain confidence in their parenting. As a mother of five, I've learned parenting is the greatest opportunity to grow ourselves up. On today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to Kristen Clark. Kristen is a seasoned marketing expert, Gallup certified strengths coach, mentor, public speaker, entrepreneur, and commissioned artist. For the past several years, Kristen has been working with students to help guide them to determine their right college major or other path, and ultimately into a career path they love. She and her husband, Steve, have two sons, Chris and Matt. Kristen, welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You. Hi, Kim. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) Yes, and your experience is so vast, but I'd love to have you focus on the work that you do with young people. Yeah, absolutely. So first, I have to tell you, I love working. It's really, you know, you ask what lights me up, truly just working has always been the favorite part of my day. Uh, In fact, I started working at 14 years old at Baskin Robbins scooping ice cream and... Me too. I I really, yes. (laughs) How funny. And we can talk about wages later because that (laughs) will totally date me. But um, what I found is I liked working much more than I liked going to school. That wasn't always a good thing. But Um, I even put myself through college and loved every minute of that. And like I think a lot of people after college, what I found is I kind of fell into my job. It found me. I did not find it. It wasn't conscious. And um, the good news is I found something that I truly loved. And within my marketing career for 20 plus years, obviously, I did well and enjoyed it and, and had fun in that career. But what I really feel like I did well is helping people understand their own unique gifts and letting them not only um, understand them, but showing them that it is a gift, that they are really good at certain things that maybe they didn't even know that they were good at as well. So how that's fantastic. And how did that translate into the work that you're doing now with, with young people? I can, I'm sure that a lot of people can relate to this. I kind of started to fall out of love with corporate (laughs) and through a lot of things. But when I look back at my career and I thought about the fact that I did fall into my work and I wasn't conscious about picking something, I kind of kept going back and saying, at what age would have I changed things? At what age would have I changed things? And and that kept kind of going through my mind. And what I ended up figuring out is this college age kid, that's when if I could have made a decision a true conscious decision about what I'd be doing moving forward, I think I would have done something very differently with my career. So I really wanted to focus on them because they've got a great opportunity to know themselves better. And as you know, I'm a a Gallup certified strengths coach. So what I love about strengths is that it does help them get that deeper knowledge of who they are, what activities excite them. And, you know, let's start making those decisions now. Let's not wait until we're 45 years old and unhappy with our job. Let's have them start raising their hand now and saying, I want to do this type of work. Well, and I'm so blessed to know you and to have had you influence and work with my two youngest kids. So Maddox at 18 is leaving high school and on his way to college, and you helped him through your work to solidify. He had an idea of what he wanted, but you really helped him, first of all, understand his strengths and what he would bring to a field that he wants to go into and really affirm what he felt in his heart. So I think that was amazing. And you're working with my 16-year-old daughter at the moment. And she is, um, I think it's really, I think it's great also because parents, we can say so much. And I I might have said the same things to my kids, but hearing it from another adult and one who takes them through uh, an inventory to learn what their real gifts are, I think is so special. So I love that you've worked with both Maddox and Mia. Um, what I want to, what I want to ask you now though, and I, I see that it lights you up and I, and I love that you've worked with, um, with my kids and a lot of other kids, but tell me what are some of the obstacles to the work that you do? 
Yeah, so one challenge that I see, especially coming from a corporate environment and then going to then everybody, you know, in my work is wearing all the hats. I think it's really tough for entrepreneurs to go from having somebody that I can go, hey, go gra grab that and bring it to me. And then I actually have to sit down and physically do that activity, right? I didn't have to do that in my work as VP of marketing. Um, so that's been a, a definitely a, def a challenge. However, I think if you're going to be an entrepreneur, the best thing that you can do is surround yourself with other people that may have strengths that you don't, right? That know how to, to deal with social media, or that might mean, you know, reaching for outside help and hiring people out for those types of activities. So, you know, not getting stuck in, I have to do it all, is probably the biggest advice that I would give to anybody that's thinking about doing this moving forward. I love that. And I can totally relate to the fact that wearing all the hats when you're, you know, an entrepreneur is something that can be very difficult, getting all those things done. In working with younger people, is there anything there? Do you feel like you have really good rapport with them? Do you feel like sometimes, it, what, what do you do when, let's just say, a, you know, a teenager maybe doesn't want to necessarily talk. Maybe mom or dad has signed them up for this and they're not 100% in. What, how do you work with that? I'll tell you what, Kim, the benefit that I get is we're talking all about them. So, yeah, so <laughs> it's, teenagers, it's beautiful when, yeah, oh they're all gosh. about them, yeah. <laughs> because so rarely do we do that. So rarely, even in our houses, do we really sit and spend an hour asking Mia or asking Maddox or asking my own kids, hey, let's talk about what you're really good at. You know, think about how exciting that is for anybody, much less a teenager. So they love that part. So quite honestly, my job's pretty easy. I love they it. They want to talk to me. That's fantastic <laughs> because my kids don't always want to talk to me. So I'm so blessed that you can talk to them. Um, let's shift gears and talk about your family and talk about, you know, um, maybe the influence that they've been on the work that you're choosing to do. Um, but yeah, share, share with us about, about your boys. And they did play a role in that when I was thinking about doing this, my boys were getting ready to go into college. So I've got a 23 year old that's starting his first career job, his real job. And then I've got a 21 year old that is a senior at OSU, go pokes. Always got to give the <laughs> little shout out. Um, so when I was going through that same process that lots of families go through, I realized just how complicated and confusing that whole process was of getting into college. And the other thing that I figured out in this, Kim, is that nobody is paying attention to the whole child. It's all about checking the box, get the thing done, you know, get the SAT, ACT um, tests taken, get them into the college, do the admissions, do the essays, right? Nobody's really stepping back and looking at the entire child and helping them to realize this is about them. It's not just another box to check. It's kind of your chance right now to figure out what you're good at. Would you mind if I read an excerpt from your book that kind of... It, sure. I, yeah. <laughs> so this, it was interesting when I was reading this, I was like, yes, that's what I'm trying so, to so say. So Kristen is alluding to the, the book that I just published and apparently she's found a, a, a <laughs> section that speaks to exactly this point. It is. And in, in your book, you write, I was taught from the beginning of my life to behave in ways that made those I loved most accept me and love me back. This is what we teach our kids on a very deep level when what they do is more important than who they are. And this is why adults today have an incredibly difficult time acknowledging their true feelings and working on themselves. And what hit me with that is we as parents have such a... Um, huge role in our kids' lives. And what we say is kind of golden. I mean, we've been leading them through their life for the last 17, 18 years and haven't made a ton of mistakes. You know, now we can ask them their opinion of this, but you know, we've done pretty well or they won't keep coming back to us to ask our opinions. When it comes to figuring out your career path and what you want to do next, it's really easy as parents to kind of keep that, trying to um, exert that influence and help them make this decision. And I really feel like what we need to do is take that step back and let them start to figure this out on their own. So would that be your greatest parenting advice? It, it was one that I was going to bring up for sure. Um, it is, I, I've got a sentence that I always give my client parents, and that is, don't try to fix it. And this is really hard for us because we've been doing this. But step back, take a pause and go, that's really interesting. Tell me more. 
Okay, that's really interesting. Tell me more. And you're going to get your kids talking, and they're going to tell you more than they ever would tell you before. I promise. I am going to use that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And and I think another thing that I have used with our kids is how can mom best support you instead of wanting to rush in and fix it for them? Because as parents, we do love them and we want them not to face challenges or hardships in their relationships, but it's in those moments that we know that we grow and and um, build things like resilience and grit. So um, I love that. That's great advice. Another thing I'd like to ask you is um, part of what we do here is we want to encourage other moms who are considering either changing careers, perhaps opening a business. What kind of advice would you give another mom who is interested in making a shift in her career or starting something new? I would say to really first think about why you're doing it. What are you trying to get out of it? And be true to that um, because it's a lot of hard work, as we all know. And, you know, what truly lights me up about my work is seeing these kids get that confidence to move forward which truly speaks to how I operate and my strengths. So that's what gets me through the harder days. And then I would also say to surround yourself with people that can help. Um, I have a gentleman that I've been working with for the last couple of years who we call our, each other accountability coaches, but truly I don't need accountability. I told you I love work. It's really more about being able to verbalize, bounce off each other. And by the way, he has very different strengths than what I have. And that helps, too, because he brings to me just as much as I bring to him in the relationship. And so I'd say lean on other people. I agree with that, and I love it. And I, I have learned and had so many great contacts and collaborations over the years of being in business myself, and you included in that, Kristen. Mm -hmm. So it's been a joy to have you on the show. If people are interested in the work that you do, tell us where they can find you. Absolutely. I make it easy. It's Kristen at KristenClark.com or go to my uh, webpage, which is KristenClark.com. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Becoming Me While Raising You. On behalf of Kristen and myself, remember, mothers are the emotional barometers in their families, so taking care of you while you build your legacy is not a luxury, it's a necessity. My passion is to help moms create peaceful homes through happier, healthier relationships with their kids by working on themselves. If you're looking for help on your parenting journey, please reach out to me through my website, reallifeparentguide.com. Until next time, namaste.